figure titles or captions appear below the figure, but a table title always appears above. So there's always the label, table one, and then either a period or a colon, and the caption that explains a little bit in right there at the title. So then the text line, explanation, when it gets removed. So, other guidelines that you should try to follow, depending on what kind of information you have in your table. table. If it's a column with text, a column with text in it, it would only be left justified in that column. If it's a column with uh, units, with numbers, then it would generally be so text is left just fine, because that's how we read it, and numbers would be centered. That's not always the case if you have a table of uh, the cost of the project. You may want to write justify those so that we can add them up. If there's a total cost at the end, that makes more sense. So do what makes sense for your document. But in general, left just So just a couple things you want to remember when you're working with tables. Sometimes a table is too big to actually fit on one page. So students ask me, well, is it okay to have it on two pages as long as you keep the same headings? Well, if a table is that big, if you're trying to get that much information across, it might be better to actually break it into two separate tables. If there's that much information, we're probably not gonna be able to see it all in one table. So break it up. Think logically, how can it be broken up? And put it into two different tables. They would have different columns, different rows. Now, if a table is too big that we can't see all of it very easily, it might be good to shade some of the lines just so we can see which row goes all the way across. Make sure that your tables have a logical order. The order can be alphabetical, it can be highest to lowest, lowest to highest, it can be chronological, geographical, whatever you want it to be, whatever makes the most sense for your table. But just make sure that it has some sort of logical order so that your reader can look at it and find the piece of information they want. So they will know if they realize it's alphabetical that they can go through to find the S's so they can find it easily. It Do what makes the most sense for your table, for your document. Don't make it willy-nilly, but if you have no other kind of organization that makes sense, then just do it alphabetical. This may seem silly, but you need to make sure that your tables are numbered consecutively. So the first table that appears would be table one goes for figures as well. The first one will be figure two, figure one, the next one will be figure two, the next one will be table two, for example, and so on. Sometimes you will have numbers by section, so if section four is your result, then you can have a, the first table of that section could be 4.1, or then the next one would be table 4.2. So let's move on to figures now that we've talked about tables. Like we said before, sometimes it makes more sense to choose a table, sometimes it makes more sense to choose a chart, a figure. A figure can show trends, whereas a table would generally show exact values. A line chart can show the exact data points as well as the trends. Notice that sometimes it can be hard to see what that exact data point is. But a line chart is a useful way to explain data, to allow us to see, to visualize the data that you have. Remember that the same rules apply as with a table. A figure should have a detailed title that follows the conventions of the journal. It's always labeled beneath the figure. Realize that a line chart should use tick marks rather than grid lines, and that the units should always be on the axes, not right next to the numbers themselves. All axes 
should be clearly labeled. We should realize quickly what they are, and the, and the units should be right there on the action plate. Like, if they're good to show friends, they're also good to give a, a general overview or Formal counting, talking about the number of something, and it's 10 or under, you write it out. If it's anything more than that, you use the actual number. One, two, there are some exceptions. So if you have the number 
two in a sentence, along with the number 36 in a sentence. You would either write them all out, or you would just use the numbers, which would probably be the best. You want all the numbers in a sentence to be the same. Now for equations. Equations in technical documents always appear on lines by themselves, but they are a part of the sentence. So what we do is lead from a sentence into the equation, and then lead out of it. Most equations will be followed by the word where, or the variable in search one. So the equation will be inserted, and then the word where will explain Because the conventions are one of the 